Firstly, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's super cool to, to be back in the U.S. I was just looking, it's been about seven years since I was last in the States, so just, you know, Ashok, WSO2, uh, you know, thanks for giving me a reason to come back to, to the U.S. It's pretty cool. I was going to spend two days afterwards, you know, down on the South Beach as well, get some, get some sun and some beer, it'll be good. So that's my plan. All right, guys, I think the way I'll do it today, um, I'm just going to tell you our story, who we are, what we do, and as I tell you our story, I'll weave in sort of how we use WSO2. And hopefully, you know, it's about banking, as she said, four o'clock in the afternoon. I know it's not the best thing for us, but let's just give it a go. Okay. Um, so, so, guys, very high level, multi-country, digital banking, emerging markets. I suppose the key message in this one is multi-country. We've got big aspirations. We want to grow, we want to get big. Uh, that's what we're wanting to do. We've got two countries at the moment, but we want to keep on growing and growing and expanding into more countries as we grow. Digital banking, that, that's the buzzword these days. All banks are digital. The big difference with us really, we just don't have branches. But, but as most of you will know, um, you've got to have some form of physical. Otherwise, it's very hard for customers to relate and trust you. So we have got a bit of physical, so I'll talk about that in a second. And then ultimately, it's all about emerging markets. And uh, we're pretty much Southern Africa and Southeast Asia. But Southeast Asia is where we're going to really look to grow and get big. That's our, that's our plan. But just from a scorecard, where are we? Um, bottom here, you can see at the bottom of Africa, that was our first bank. And as Seshi said, uh, we started that five years ago. Um, launched it uh, Feb 2019, we had nine and a half million customers in South Africa, and thank goodness after lots of blood, sweat, tears, pain, we broke even for the first time in December, so you know, that was a, a hell of a thing for us, you know, drank a, a lot after that one, so that was a good way to celebrate. Um, our second bank, we, we built in the Philippines, and we launched that in October 2022, 18, 19 months ago, and that's growing uh, great guns, and that's doing, uh, it's got three and a half million customers already. That's in the Philippines. Um, sticking to this theme of growth, we actually are right now in fairly advanced conversations um, to, to start a bank in Vietnam. So all going well, in the next two, three months, we actually start the build in Vietnam. That will be our third bank, and, and so we plan on going. Interesting, at the top there you can see in Vietnam, the, the tech and the product area is predominantly based out of Ho Chi Minh City or Saigon in the old language. We've got about 400 people there, just eat, sleep, drink, engineering and product. So that's, that's a major hub for us. And a random stat on the right hand side, as a group between South Africa and the Philippines, we're onboarding pretty much consistently 450,000 customers every single month. That's what we're doing. Okay. Now, to flip this around and get a bit more technical for a while, let's talk from an infrastructural point of view. What's the foundation we're laying? How are we getting, uh, how are we going to put that foundation so we can grow and meet these sort of growth aspirations? So at a million foot level, I'll first just tell you, we have adopted AWS as our cloud platform. That's who, who that's who we embed with quite heavily. And we're opting for that a silo and a pooled model. That's what we're opting for. And just to pick on the pool for a second, we've created a pool of, from AWS in Frankfurt. And as you can see, that's roughly equidistant uh, you know, from, from our countries to, to where we want to go. And in Frankfurt, we've put a lot of common systems. So our, our contact center system, our financial crime system, our, some of our back office systems, our marketing engines, they all run out of the pooled environment in Frankfurt. Uh, and as we go, we plan on, as we bring more countries on board, we just want to plug it into the pool and just keep it expanding like that. that that's quite important for us because all of this, it just keeps unit economics down. That's a critical thing for us in emerging markets. You know, it's very price sensitive. So that's what we're doing. Banking, there are lots of data aspects where you need isolation, performance isolation, et cetera, compliance reasons. So we also have silos. And you can see in Ireland, we've created a silo that services the South African banks. So largely, the whole bank from South Africa runs out of Ireland, believe it or not. So we've put it over there. The silo for the Philippines runs in the AWS Singapore region. And assuming we then go ahead and build Vietnam soon, we will create another silo in the Singapore region. So that's pretty much how we're planning on growing and spreading the wings. Top left-hand corner, I've got single source code. That's a big deal for us. Um, so at each of these silos, we're actually trying to get the identical source code. That's what we're trying to do, to keep it as consistent as possible. Just a few feature toggles here and there per domain, per market, and some nuances, but that's what we're planning on doing. The other big one, just from a common point of view, I've got the word WSO2 there. 
Um, just to introduce that, we use WSO2 for two primary use cases. One, it's our API gateway. So all traffic in and out of our banks, all of it, is done through WSO2. That's what we do from a gateway point of view. The other one is our customer identity. So all B2C, everything is done in WSO2. But again, we are trying to get common suppliers, common partners, common platforms, the same everywhere. Unit economics again. So where we've got WSO2 used, we want it all patterned identically. So that's pretty much the way we're setting up and we're growing out. Okay. Now, earlier on, I spoke about we've got 450,000 customers and we're doing that consistently every month. So one of the success stories and how the hell we've able to do this, it's this thing here, this big blue thing. We call it the kiosk. We're inside our world, we've got an innovation team. This innovation team, they've actually designed and built that kiosk. We've got about we've got a good few thousand of these things spread across South Africa and across the Philippines. Um, just to give you guys a sort of a feel for the customer journey, uh, before I do that, these kiosks, we've also gone into a, a sort of a strategic relationship or a partnership with large retailers. So, for example, a Walmart equivalent. And what we've done with them, and, and these, these large retailers have got huge footprints, and their stores are all over the country, and typically they've got stores in the communities as well. So what we've done, we've placed these kiosks in the stores. So literally, where you go to buy your bread, milk, groceries, you'll see our kiosk there. We've got an ambassador standing next to it. So you walk into the store, the ambassador will welcome you to open a bank account. And literally, with just an identifier, identification number, a government identification number, your biometrics, either facial or fingerprint, we open up a bank account, a savings account, and then, all in under five minutes, we actually personalize on the back of this card, we print your name and bank account number and spit it out of the kiosk, this little slot at the bottom here, all in five minutes. And when you're done there, you've got a bank account that's live and open, a Visa debit card completely enabled and live, and then the ambassador can tell you to download the app. And what we've also done, we've done deep integration into the till points of the retailers as well. And we've got about 40 odd thousand till points that we present in. You can take literally cash out of your pocket and walk to the retailer, deposit money in the till, and it'll be valued immediately in your bank account. So that's sort of what we're doing, you know, but other than that, it's just a Visa card that you can use anywhere in the world, any ATM. So that's the journey um, that's been so successful for us from an origination perspective. To just pause for a second and just go a little bit more slowly and just bring WSO2 into this equation where we use it. Um, so. I started off saying that the very first thing you do when you walk up to that thing, you've got to enter your mobile number onto the screen there. And it's just interesting at that point, just a little segue. For the different markets, we've actually learned, we've actually had to make a slightly different size kiosk. Well, this kiosk is identical, but the plinth at the bottom, because we've noticed from a demographics point of view, the Filipino people are slightly shorter than some of the people in South Africa. You know, so to make it sort of a nice screen height so they can touch and get fingerprints on slightly uh, smaller kiosks than the ones in South Africa. But the opposite is true when you take the selfie. For example, the slightly darker skin complexion in Africa, we, we light up that, that TV above the thing slightly brighter to get a better selfie image. So all of that weird shit we've had to sort of learn in, along the way as we go that. But back to my story, we, we ask for a mobile number, we catch that. The second we catch it, we then send that off to the telcos, because as you guys are probably aware, there's a lot of fraud in this world when it comes to banking, and we get a check sum back from the telcos to see if there's any duplication of your SIM card or any swim swaps in the background. We do that quick check. We ask for the identification number of the person, the government ID number that they just type in, or we can scan something, but then we also do a selfie and a liveness check at the same time, or fingerprint. We take that data, we send that to government databases, we send it to credit bureaus, we also do um, anti-money laundering checks, we do um, terrorist checks, we do politically sensitive checks, all that guff that banks need to do. Once we've got all of that, we've ticked all of that, then we actually know the human being standing in front of the kiosk is actually who they say they are and they're alive. So that's what we know and we need to do that. Thereafter, we then hit an instruction to the WSO2. All of this, by the way, is all WSO2 gateway back and forth. Everything is via WSO2. It's also worth telling you that that kiosk is actually, we've had to apply to Visa to be treated like a vault because Visa don't easily allow you just to have blank debit cards lying around. They get quite worked up with that stuff. So, so we've had to certify aspects in the kiosk as a vault. So we've got to bolt that thing to the floor. 
But ultimately, that thing talks to our world just via the mobile network. So, you know, just this aerial in the back of this thing that just talks cellular network to us in the back end. But all of that conversation is via WSO2. But back to my story. Once we've checked, who you say who you are, and we've done all the KYC AML checks, we then hit WSO2's identity server, and that's where we create your identity immediately. And once we've done that, we'll open your bank account in our core systems, the savings account in the core systems, and then the interesting stuff starts. Inside this thing over here, we've got, there's a printer actually. You know, what we then do, we advance the next debit card up in the printer. As it's being advanced, we scan and get the barcode off the back of the, the card because you're not allowed to transmit card numbers anywhere. You know, and Visa will freak out and PCR regulation, all that stuff. So we, we send the, 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 so once we've got that barcode, we send that back to our card management system. The card management system then says, ah, that's the barcode. This is the bin or pan number. They, we bind it to the everyday bank account, and we mark it as live and active. And then it gets, and then it gets printed with your name and account number and spat out. That's the whole journey. So that's what we all do in under five minutes. That's a hell of a thing. You know, and emerging markets, we've got power fluctuations, telco fluctuations. You've also got, you know, on a Tuesday morning in a shopping center, 10 o'clock, there's not a lot of people. You go there on a Saturday morning, it is pumping, and the cell tower is melting, you know, from the traffic, etc. So to, to get all of this technically operational and working at scale and at the, the, the customer experience level has been a mission, but that's what we've managed to achieve, and we're getting 450,000 out of this thing. Um, now, this word is, is actually quite a complicated word, but ultimately, this is what banks are all about. Whether you are our little bank or you are Citibank, it's all about trust. Now, why I've got this here, it's such a critical word. All of us here, we all work hard for our salaries, or we think we do. Um, to, 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 to persuade you guys to move your salaries to a young new bank you've never really heard of or is just on the market, it takes quite a lot of this word, trust. Whereas the old banks, City, HSBC, you can name them, Chase, you just accept. Yeah, obviously, you know, there's nothing wrong there. So why I've put this up here is that what is so critical for us is in our marketing, um, you know, that little heart there, we're in our apps to create the visual language of trust, trust, trust. It's everything we do. It's so critical to us as a grower, as a bank. Otherwise, no one will bank with us. You know, so it is, but, but the, the actual point I want to get to is when it comes back to the folks in this room, myself, the engineering aspects of it, guys, there is nothing, nothing that destroys trust more in banking than system stability and unreliability. It is critical. So you can market the hell out of the place, you can do all that sexy you know, visual language in your apps. If, if you have just filled your car with petrol or gasoline, or you've got a full trolley of groceries and you want to use your debit card, issue or you want to get your app going, issue. It is game over. And at the end of the day, if, if you guys all know the word, there's a run on the bank. In the old days, a run on the bank used to be people stand behind ATMs and draw cash, and you know, go to the branches, draw cash. That's a slow run, it's like a, a slow bleed, actually. If you think about the modern world, all you gotta do is pick up your app, transfer money out. You are fucking dead. So you can go from having a bank that is quite strong and having Billions in, in customer deposits, you can go from that down to zero in hours. Then you've got no more bank anymore, got no customers. So this is critical in our world. Now, just to take that a step further, the app. All of you, I mean, none of us like to call the call center. None of us go to the, um, the branches that much anymore. This is our primary engagement tool. We use, as you heard, identity server of WSO2 as our front door. It is critical that we get in. But back to my previous point about trust. Guys, ultimately, one of my biggest asks of any suppliers and partners I deal with you know, is, is, guys, number one, it's got to work. And it's got to work all the time. We cannot tolerate any downtime, any resilience issues. It is all about availability and reliability. So we measure, and Datadog's our tool we use a lot, we measure like everything very, very carefully to make sure that everything is firing on all cylinders all the time. But ultimately, this login must work. And why it's also so critical in our world, never mind from the customer experience perspective, 
ultimately for us as a bank, we charge nothing every month in recurring bank charges. We don't charge bank charges on a monthly recurring basis. We work on a pay-as-you-go basis. So in the emerging markets, people will typically top up their airtime on their mobile phones. They might use prepaid electricity meters that they buy that and get a token they capture in. So all of those transactions in emerging markets, you even buy lottery tickets through your, your mobile app you know, in our, some of our world. So, so all of that, we get a small commission. So having customers easily logging in and transacting is fundamental to our profitability as an organization. And again, it's back down to everything must just work and be secure and create that trust environment all the time. It, it is so important. Okay. I'm hopping on about that, but uh, you, you guys get the point. Okay. Just on this, I'm not going to bore you to tears here with all this stuff, but the one I do want to touch on is that app login, that top the 90%, 351 milliseconds. That's quite an interesting one, actually, because if you take, yeah, this is a cool picture here, or well, this one here. If you take that 351 milliseconds, you take, let's say you some, you know, fellow standing in Johannesburg in South Africa, you hit, your, your, you hit the app and you want to log in. The second you obviously, you know, you bound your face to the login, you hit that. Pretty much what happens is that login goes to the local cell phone tower, which then gets routed down to Cape Town, the bottom left there. We then send that thing all the way around the Horn of Africa, up the beach into Ireland in AWS there. That's actually where our identity server sits, WSO2. It then comes back down all the way, Cape Town, back to Joburg, and that's where we're getting 351 milliseconds, which is incredible, you know, given the speed of light and all that complicated stuff. You know, so um, th that's what we're getting from a 90% point of view. So all around, it looks like it's fairly positive uh, from that perspective, from the responsiveness all around. And that's just to give you guys a feel for that. You know, that's just averages. So it's averages request a second. The bottom two are also just to share with you, and this is just one of our infrastructural blobs for the channels, but we've got two models at the moment we're trying. In the South African context, we're trying in Ireland. We manage all ourselves and our partners, um, Jonathan and, and then from Dox and Steve. Uh, they manage this environment for us here in South Africa. And in the Philippines environment, we're experimenting with WSO2 as a managed service as well. You know, and we just, we're just doing that to see how it goes. But that's sort of just some ideas of volume. The younger banks obviously got the, the fewer requests, et cetera. But, you know, that's just FYI. Now, just to change the topic completely, I've spoken a lot about the bank and the customers and all this stuff. Um, and I heard a few questions earlier about feature team sizes and all this thing. I thought I would also just turn this around and say inside the organization, and again, many of you guys will be familiar with this thing. Uh, let's assume that this is lending, a lending platform, and we've got our feature teams, and you guys know all this. There's work, and our job as you know, product and engineering people is get work off a priorities list or off a, you know, whatever, prioritization list, through a development uh, cycle and development environment into production. That's our job. We all know that. And the faster we can move stuff from the, the, the backlogs and the prioritization lift into production, the happier our businesses are. It's you know, not rocket science, this. Why I'm telling you this is that thing, the feature team, that red blob in the middle, that thing is absolutely critical. That, in my simple brain, is the only way you get stuff into production. The feature team does it. You know, nobody else does it. Now, on that point, and I read a lot of these um, IT revolution books, and, and, you know, they talk about cognitive load. And if you look at the modern feature team, and I'm sure your businesses are all the same, but certainly for us in the world of banking, the modern feature team, before you can, you know, you work on the feature, which is interesting for the customer or whatever case may be, crikey, you've got to spend so much time on bloody privacy, on cyber issues, on resilience, on high availability, on observability. I mean, as long as I'm an arm, all these things that the people need to worry about, in addition to building the feature and getting it in production. So the cognitive load gets quite high for these guys. So what is so important as well, and that's that word, there's dependencies on platforms. As we work with partners like WSO2, and Sanjeeva spoke about this word platform lists and all these fancy words, but ultimately for me, if any supplier or partner like a WSO2 can actually give, almost minimize that cognitive load, reduce the cognitive load, make the sort of engineering team's job a little bit easier so they focus more on the business problem, more on the feature, as opposed to all of the other complexity. So we put a lot of thinking into that all the time, and that's obviously where we're working with our partners, DAX and WSO2, 
to in the world of API, in the world of identity, how can we minimize that? But it's across the board. We do it with all our, with all our, our platforms as well. But that's just a, you know, just a visual I thought I would share with you guys just to sort of show how we think about life um, in our world. Okay, so where to from? I know I speak bloody fast, so I'm, I'm sorry, but I, it's just, pff, never mind. Um, where to from here with WSO2? A couple of points, and I think the speaker before spoke about open banking, and, and we don't have open banking regulation per se in our markets uh, yet, okay? But so this is a bit of a misnomer, but effectively I'm meaning <clears throat> a developer portal. So we all know that modern banking is all about embedded finance. It's all about building ecosystems. You know, so I think we need to put a lot more effort into, into actually creating much more polished um, developer portals, polished APIs, all around are standardized, cleaner, so it's easier for partners to integrate into us to leverage our rails and so forth. So I think, again, with our, with our partners, we're putting quite a lot of effort into doing that, and we actually are using WSO2 part of that process as well. So that's what we're doing. The next one is more about the identity side. Banking, again, critical, guys, um, but Ultimately, customers, they, they, it drives them nuts, when you, especially when you think there's a fraud and you do an OTP or a one-time password or a pop-up here to confirm this. We, we, we're really trying to sort of get as much behavioral data from the apps they're using, device fingerprinting, all sorts of stuff. But how can we reduce friction in the entire process of identity and login and all these good things? And then heaven help the poor customer if they lock themselves out of their bank account. You know, then, then all drama starts, you know, because it's, it's a hard thing to reset a bank password, typically. And, and you could say, well, obviously, because this is my money, you know, but, but we also do need to find ways to actually take friction out of that, because unfortunately, in our world, we've seen if customers get locked out of their identity, the friction is so high that you end up bloody losing them. You know, so it's that balance uh, as we got to take from a risk perspective as well. So it's very important that we get that customer friction really clean and smart. Business banking, everything I've spoken about today is B2C. We are definitely getting into the B2B market, so B2B2C, uh, we, we're going in that, and again, we're looking at WSO2 to assist us there. And then my last point, which I already spoke about to death earlier on, guys, at the end of the day, we want to, we've got big aspirations. We want to keep rolling out to new countries. That's what we, that's our model, and we hope it works for us one day, but yeah, we seem to be off on the right track. Guys, and that's my story. I hope it was semi-interesting to see how it fitted in. Not too boring, four o'clock on a Friday or Wednesday. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>